All right, we got my receiver down on the bench today because over the past couple years, I've been having the same problem. The audio, whether on the speakers or through headphones, will cut out on random channels. And I know why. It's just now that I'm getting to fixing it. So the problem is that there are multiple relays in there that the audio has to go through. And the problem is that it has a bad contact, and I've already had this apart to clean them before. It's come back over the past couple years. So what I've had to do is just switch off the speakers or unplug the headphones and then crank up the audio like crazy and then turn it back down. And that will be able to pass enough current to break through the bad contacts. <clears throat> And then for like a couple more minutes, it would play. But it's getting bad enough that I just need to replace the relays, go on DigiKey and what have you. And while I have my whole hi-fi stack taken apart, I want to do something that I've already done to this receiver to the rest of the components, which is modifying the power input. As you can see here, I put an IEC input on this, and it's really nice because it makes it servicing or moving components very easy because then you just have to unplug everything and you can leave the cables in place. And I opted for C13 instead of C8, which is the figure eight style. Do I have one around? I don't think so. Because Believe it or not, grounding this actually got rid of a ground loop issue that I had. And in fact, these systems here can have a different problem, which is that screws will start to work their way loose or and simultaneously develop oxidization. And then things that are grounded through screws will break up and you can have similar errors. So we're now taken apart and here you can see what I've done here. I've actually bonded the ground to a number of things here. Yes, this is a while ago. I should probably clean some of that flux up now that I'm in here again. As you can see, massive transformer. This thing can pump a ton of audio through. In fact, normally when I'm listening, it's only up like that much. So, the relays we need to get to are going to be like down here. You can see that one. And that actually I think is the only one. Um, the receiver I have here has also had that issue, but cleaning it once fixed it. This is only being done because I love this receiver so much. Why do I love this receiver that much? This right here. Beautiful display. It has the adjustable equalizer, as you can see here. Motor-driven volume control. When you press the volume up and down, there's actually a motor on the back here that turns the knob. And it has a ton of inputs, which is good. The only thing I'd probably replace this with is the higher-up ones in the line, which I really do want. The STRAV 1010 adds um, composite on the front. This one only has them on the back. And then the D2010 has digital inputs with a very cool display showing what sampling rate it's at. And a graphic equalizer that takes up this whole space here instead of that smaller space. But unfortunately, those are incredibly sought after and expensive. So without further ado, Let's start taking this apart and let's see what we need to replace. One of the cool things as well about this receiver is that you don't have to take this apart much at all to actually just service components. As you can see here, there's a big door on the bottom. So two screws and the door literally falls off. 
So now we can get access to all the traces underneath. Um, and yeah, service pretty much everything on the main board here. So here's our relay, and this is going to be our problem, most likely. It's possible this small relay here could also be it, but I doubt it. And again, that's pretty much the only other relay. And while I'm here, I'm also going to check this battery to see if I should replace it with a battery holder. You can see here these carbon contacts here will eventually get dirty and will need to be cleaned. Again, I've done that before already, hence how easily this kind of pulled off. We're going to have to look up this part number and see what we can find on DigiKey. Hopefully we can find something because the service manual wasn't really useful. And while we're in here, again, like I said, these screws, um, when these lose contact, as you can see here, this is a ground connection here. And because of the dissimilar metals used here, they can sometimes work their way out or they'll simply corrode. So I'm going to not only contact clean this, but I'm going to wipe it clean with some sandpaper. And then when I thread it in, I'm going to use some good old Loctite. Not sure which one yet. Removing the other relay is going to be a bit challenging because its contacts are under there. And the camera's not showing it, but that's a bit hard to reach. But I can do it with solder wick. It'll just take a while. Quick update because... I fell asleep way too early, so I'm up at 4 a.m. Um, I've replaced the screws, and as you can see here, I've put a split washer and a normal washer on it. Here, let's focus on this one here. As well as used some blue Loctite. Okay, so here are the relays, like we mentioned before, and just got in from DigiKey. Both types of relays, as well as a couple types of C8 connectors for the other things like I was talking about. <clears throat> so first thing I want to do is lower the camera down so you can get a close-up look here. And actually compare them in person now. So let's see if that's the same on here. Good. Okay, and then this guy here. And yes, I did get two of each to be safe. Looks like these leads might be ever so slightly different, but it's with well within the ability of being able to move it in the holes. So, in fact, oh, that's what it is. See, they line up if I move it slightly up. I had a piece of like the white tack here, which I'm going to use to hold the relays in place. And I know that for this one here, I could um, pull this card out, but it shouldn't be necessary. Oh crap pad just lifted. See the pad that got lifted? I'm gonna have to move that. Crap. Okay, the bodge job is done, which took way longer than expected. I tried first using some enamel transformer wire that didn't work, so I just got actually coincidentally some stuff from another Sony product. So now that's done. On to the next relay. All right, so here they are installed. So now just to put it back together and test it. Sounds good so far. 
and I'm going to check all the channels to make sure it works fine and also give it some extended listening through the headphones. I got my mini disc player out so I can listen to some music. So, cut to there. I don't know why I get such a kick out of working on the things that I am currently using. Just putting it all back together, but I am playing music, as you can see here. So, <clears throat> almost done. All right, dremeled out the hole just a little bit. I just had to widen it very slightly and then add these notches here. So now this will simply fit in. Then all I have to do is just take the little proprietary, on, the, the uh, proprietary little thingy here, and just terminate it up here and then run it to the thing. Okay, doing my cassette deck now, and this time I was much more restrained with the Dremel, so. I just realized I forgot to film an outro, so here we go. Um, as you can see here, it's all put back together, and as you can hear, it's working just fine. All the components work. I can turn it down super quiet, and it's not cutting out at all. All the inputs are good. And if we look on the side here, these components now have IEC inputs, which has actually come in handy now because both of these components have had to be serviced. All I had to do was have someone lift the components above them, slide it out, put it back when it's fixed, and then it was all good to go. So I hope this video was useful or at the very least entertaining, and thanks for watching.